Hello everybody and welcome to another edition of Magic Mike's, proudly sponsored by our Patreon supporters and CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, and our co-sponsor CardHoarder.com, offer the best inventory prices and delivery of cards for Magic Online. I am Evan Irwin, and we get started each week by saying hello to my two co-hosts, Aaron Campbell. Hi everybody. Ruben Bressler. Hi, how you doing? I'm just making sure that nothing, uh, n- the Twitter didn't blow up in the five minutes since we've gone <laughs> live, but I think we're good for right now. Oh, we'll so. get to, we'll get to talk about that. A little we bit later. We will talk about we that. We will later. talk Girl. about it. All right. We get started with our trumpet blast. We ain't got one, but you can support us on our highest level on Patreon and get yourself one if you want to talk about an event. Uh, well, you're not going to talk about an event. You're talking about like a birthday or something, you know, where you say sh- right. safely socially distance and don't go elsewhere. Oh, yeah. You got to update the stream title. Oh, okay, no. If you haven't. Oh, no. I always. Professional. F- you know, we just were talking about how this is a professional outfit. <laughs> <laughs> this is awful. I mean, if you Ethan Fleischer's in the chat. Uh oh, we gotta, oh, we gotta oh, keep, God. we gotta go oh, easy on Wizard oh, now. Oh, oh, oh. We uh, cheese it, everybody. It's the Rosers. The uh, title has been updated. Thank you so much. Okay. Okay, if right. you stop the stream and start it again, it will update the title. If you want to use that video, would you rather do that? It's up to you. Okay, I'm, I'm fine. Just running ahead. It's fine. All it's right, not let's a big run deal. It. Um, it's never been a big deal in the past. All right, so. First pick this week is Jumpstart. Now, we just finished M21. We can't even, like, finish talking about the Terror of the Peaks thing, this most ridiculous Red Mythic, one of the most craziest cards I've ever seen on rate in my life. Uh-huh. Okay, because we got to talk about Jumpstart, mm-hmm. the other product coming out a week after yeah. M21 that is amazing. I right. am so pumped for Jumpstart. It's It looks like it's working out the way that uh, they wanted it to. Uh, the little packs that, that are starting to come out, you know, here's the witch's pack, and then here's like the dog's pack, which is really cool. Um, and there's a land that's attached to all of them, and the one with the dog, you know, has a little dog in it, which is going to be really awesome. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the idea that Jumpstart is the ability to bring limited to people like Aaron who hate limited right. is brilliant. No, 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 To be clear, I like limited. I just I struggle with the deck building aspect, where it's like you know I like opening up a couple of packs um, and 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 doing the thing. Um, but I struggle with looking at the card pool. I always like to say that limited is like a Rorschach test that I always fail. Sure. Where like you look at the card pool and it's like what do you see? And I'm like um I see like a green blue mid range deck, and they're like wrong. It's a black red aggro deck. Right. And I'm just like damn it. And so you know. This gives me the ability to play limited, in essence, um, and then just kind of open and play with what I open. So this is perfect for me. Yeah, because there's not supposed to be any sort of real decisions about it. You just shuffle them together. Bam, you're ready to go. That is freaking brilliant. And I just cannot tell you how awesome this product is because it takes the best of Keyforge. Keyforge is a game that has unique decks. Every single Mm -hmm. deck is unique. No two decks are alike. Um, You can't mix and match cards out of your deck because they're just all in that one deck. Well, Jumpstart is kind of that way in that you have have packs mm-hmm. of, you know, dogs or witches or whatever, always going to be the same cards in there, but how you pair it with a different, you know, one different type is going to make it always a different experience. That is awesome, and mm-hmm. I love it, and honestly, if anything, if we could be running events right now, Jumpstart would crush. Yeah. Oh, my I God. Would, I would play in After them. work, whatever, stop by the game shop, buy a couple packs of Jumpstart, shuffle them up, play some games, go home. That was a whole limited experience, and you didn't have to spend all that time drafting and cutting stuff and uh-huh. counting lands you want to put in and all sort of crap. Absolutely fantastic. I would curve. absolutely play in a Jumpstart event. Yeah. It looks like a blast. And the coolest thing to me about Jumpstart is I'm looking at these preview cards, and I'm like, these are all very low-complexity cards like every preview i've seen from jumpstart is like this is a pretty big this would go in a core set right Mm -hmm. but because of their interactions with each other as you shuffle different types of decks together Mm -hmm. or different jumpstarts together into one new deck they're going to play differently every single time it's a very interesting product um and i i don't feel preview overload like I did what was we had like back to back to back preview seasons Mm -hmm. a couple months Mm -hmm. ago Um, this doesn't feel huge to me because M21 very clearly uh, uh, geared towards competitive players Mm -hmm. this very clearly not geared towards competitive players very Mm -hmm. this is like the Venn diagram almost doesn't overlap Um, I am 
very excited for this project pr uh, product, and I completely agree that this would blow things out of the water if we had in-store events right now because it the looks like so much fun. The thing I love the most fun. about this is the people that are excited about it, even though they don't know what it is. Yeah, <laughs> they're like this art, this this card, yeah. like reprints. What's a jumpstart? Here's <laughs> all right. So yeah. here's the, here's the sort of the the, the 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 icing on the cake. The best part about this is that after you have that experience, right, that you bought two packs, you shelf them together, and you can break them back apart, yep. and you mm -hmm. can have here, you know. I want to try the witch with the Garrick stuff, and let's do the yeah. rainbow with the whatever stuff yep. and shuffle that. That's amazing. You get the As best of both the worlds. Decks, yeah. Which are can you do both? Like, can you do double witch? Is that? I think they're meant to have different. You yeah. Know, okay. I mean, obviously you can. You'd have twice as many okay. of the stuff, but I think it's right. meant to sort of have two different ones being paired together. That's yeah, fair. yeah, and yeah, it looks super cool. And speaking of the witch, that John, all the hands witch is oh hilarious. I love that art so much. Yeah, very if that was weird. in any way cosplayable, I would absolutely do that. Like, yeah, so Ooh, we can get yeah. some mannequin arms. Yeah, we're gonna um, be sure to donate to Aaron's uh, <laughs> cosplay fund. If you'd like to give me a hand, I'd wow. really appreciate it. Wow, only yeah. hands. Don't let that one pass you by. That was amazing. Oh yeah. man, giving out feet pics to buy some Subscribe hands. Subscribe to Just... my my on the, on the one hand. You're like, <laughs> why is, so is Ruben here? Why is Ruben here? Only hands. Yeah, really. That's why, why, why Ruben is here. Only hands. Yep. Only hands. Yeah. Yeah. Goodness gracious. Well, look, we're going to move on. Uh, anything else you guys want to talk about Jumpstart? I think we covered it fairly well. I think it looks Just great. Just a lot of really neat, exciting cards. Um, you know, the Thriving Bluff, uh, people were really the excited. The Thriving Cycle. Yeah. yeah, the Thriving Cycle is really nice. There's been some talk. Poppers getting some great cards out of this, the Thriving Cycle being one of them. Mm. Um, the Cat... Yeah. Um, from uh, a cauldron familiar is being downshifted to common. Mm -hmm. Yep. And so people are already starting to brew with that and the cow from Throne of Eldraine, oh the white discard Bartered cow. cow. Yeah. You pay that with tortured existence and that could be a thing. And so people are putting their brewing hats on for this set and I'm completely here for it. Yeah, it's totally cool. It's a bunch of reprints. Uh, and, and I don't think we're actually going to touch much into the fact that uh, Arena is not going to get every single Jumpstart card, but a bunch mm -hmm. of them, whatever. The Thriving Cycle is awesome. Here's why. Now, the Thriving Cycle if you don't know, uh, it's a bunch of lands that enter the battlefield tapped. As they enter the battlefield, you choose a color other than the one they naturally tap for, and then you tap it for right. a color and then the whatever you chose. And the cool right. part is that that could possibly cause memory issues, but in a format like Jumpstart, you're probably just going to Doesn't be matter. two colors. Yeah. Like, that's that's fantastic. It's like, the design's great, but it fits so well in the product. That just, I just, I, just, I, just, I love when that happens. It's fan freaking Aaron's just mad that two of the three cards they said that aren't coming to to the arena. Well, the three cards that I heard were Reanimate. Time to Feed. It was like, who cares? Reanimate and Exhume. It's right. like, well, they, they, excuse you know, me, at excuse me next me. time. Excuse me, Scourge of Meltoth was one of them too. Oh, like, this sure, is, that one too. Yeah. This is discrimination. Yes. Okay, like, wow. I, this I'll is... have you know, Wizards, Wizards, I was prepared to spend hard earned silver and rubies and whatever, <laughs> and whatever yep. your magic. Yep. Stuff was that, tokens yes, on this, and you Disney are not, dollars. You are yes. not getting my dust anymore. That's with, right. That's, you that's right. Stop it with your stuff. Damn it. Okay. <laughs> well, and everything is awful. Uh, Origins was officially officially canceled. Origins oh. originally tried to push to October, um, and then uh, and, and then privately, uh, many companies. <clears throat> many companies uh, that I may know had told them <laughs> we're not going in October y'all because yeah. we got a problem oh, and so we wow. have we have faced said problem and we are going to just postpone Origins till next year uh, Eternal Weekend appears to be canceled Ooh. yeah I, again another we knew this was coming um, Eternal Weekend has been canceled uh, there is talk of it moving online mm -hmm. somehow mm -hmm. um, which poses some interesting problems in a way um, obviously you can't have a serious competitive event as webcam magic you just can't right. um, it's it's just you're you're leaving yourself open to cheating and other issues like that um, it also means more card availability so if they bring it to magic online uh, legacy and vintage are much cheaper on magic online you're still paying a pretty penny but nowhere close to what you're playing in paper right. the issue there is is there enough of these cards to support all of these people you know you look at card hoarder you look at goat bots you know yeah it's cheaper but can can all of these people get the necessary cards to be able to play this and so there's some benefits to taking it online um, and there's also some downsides as well and um, I understand the conversations are happening eternal weekend has always been a very well-run event and so I'm hoping that whatever they 
do, you know, they bring that same care and that same touch to it because, you know, a lot of us, it's just, for me at least, it's become the one event that I will absolutely go to each year right. and it's, it sucks. I mean, it's, it's, yeah. but it's great that we do have a legitimate online option mm-hmm. that you can pivot to to say, look, all of magic's there. It's different cost. It's a little bit different setup. You gotta gotta get used to it. Um, but you know, vintage can still happen in a digital way. And legacy, yeah, yeah and legacy. Mm-hmm. So that'd be great. Um, yeah. Product delays coming to uh, North America. Unfortunately, this means part of it is the Secret Lair Ultimate Edition. That means the Fetch Lands. Uh, so we'll receive that one month, uh, okay. within one month of the June 12th U.S. release date. Uh, no, so not all of them are affected. There, there have been some that have already dispersed. Uh, mm-hmm. Corset 2021 bundles are going to be uh, late. They're going to launch with fewer bundles than originally sure. planned. Um, okay. And the Planeswalker decks and Arena Starter Kits are just MIA, I believe so, for the moment. They're unavailable at launch, mm-hmm. and they'll work, obviously, to get that fixed. Um, Jumpstart also might have availability issues at launch. Uh, the product will be available in smaller quantities than originally intended. So uh, they, they, however, they said they have a we have a fun taste of Jumpstart plan for M21's buy a box promotion. Each buy a box will come with two Jumpstart boosters to give you a sample of how fun this set can be. By those buy a box Jumpstart boosters are unaffected by this delay. So go out there, get your booster box of M21, and you can try Jumpstart basically for free. Um, and maybe you'll score a sweet mythic or something. Who knows? Uh, let's move on here to let's see what else we got here. All right, the last thing and everything sucks. PAX West is moving online. So, yeah. so some- PAX was I- another one of those events that was really holding out hope. And, right. and I think that at one point they even said, like in response to other cancellations, like, don't worry, we're still going to be here. And then now. No, no, no. I also thought that PAX Australia had an announcement. Um, oh, did they? Because <clears throat> that's in early September. Uh, but I could be mistaken on that. The point is that every major convention in the year 2020 isn't going to happen. Yeah. Like the, on the scale of one to ten, it's a ten to have a Origins style, Comic Con style, PAX style giant event. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know there are some colleges that are saying that they're going to have live classes come the fall, and like high schools are saying that they might have students in earlier than expected. And it's, but that's a different scenario than a hundred thousand people getting together in San Diego right. for Comic Con, right? Mm-hmm. So conventions in a cramped hall, lots of travel, lots of. You know, everybody gets con crud anyway. Mm-hmm. I would be surprised if any of these major events that had over a thousand people were running in 2020. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Unless um, they're running in Florida, because Florida <laughs> is is another planet. <laughs> Who declared the WWE an essential service? Jeez, you guys had what two thousand new cases yesterday? Like twenty seven hundred, like the most. It's scary. Wisconsin had like two hundred. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> freaking me out, man. No one's around here wearing masks. I don't like anything. I'd stay away from everyone. Oh my god. Yeah, if you want a new mask, all you have to do is uh, show up to a protest in Southern California. <laughs> Because we got tons. I mean, say what you will. It's funny that you mention that because when I went to the protest a week and a half ago, I felt safer there and more people were wearing masks than when I went to Ikea the other day. And I would say like half the people wearing masks. So you would think for all the for all the things people like to say about the protesters and, oh, you're, there's so many people and you're going to be outside. I felt safer there than I did at a retail store. Like that's saying something. Uh, one of the, uh, just, just while we're touching on the protests, one of the guys that goes to my LARP had a photo of his go viral recently because he made a sign. I saw that. He, so he made a shield sign <laughs> that said when when a town guard attacks the whole party rolls for initiative. Yes. <laughs> and it was a shield that had that on it and he, he went kind of so that was kind oh, of cool. Man, for him. That's yeah. crazy. That's dope. Um, what's wrong what happened to Standard? Can someone tell me what this like ruin happened? In standard, this players tour that had less yeah. viewers than limited GPs used to get, that yeah, had yeah. tens of thousands of dollars in prizes in a format that, I mean, is so broken. I believe we had we had thirty two smugglers copters in the top eight of like an SCG event or something. Not the pro tour. You've had right. thirty two of Jace in the top, you know, uh, thirty two of, of a PT. We have two different cards that are thirty two copies of both Breeding Pool and Growth Spiral in this pro tour. This PT, yep. this players, whatever you want to. Call it, man. The mm-hmm. format is broken. 
Yeah, this pro tour was a bit of a bust. Um, you know, there were a lot of people saying that it was a fake pro tour. There was a lot of, you know, fake PT hashtags going around. Team, Re- Team Re- Reclamation was, what, 30% of the meta on day one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the amount of green cards there, there were some cry- Some people were joking on Twitter about, like, you know, ban forest, ban breeding pool. Um, you know, the Reclamation decks were everywhere. And um, between the low viewership, some people were complaining about the production quality as well, that mm. um, it hadn't, they hadn't really adapted well to working from home Mm. to doing that. There was some criticism over the cast, especially coming after the last couple of weeks, you know, the cast being very you know, not having any any black talent, and so that was something that people were bringing up, right. or very little black talent, um, and so people just really didn't care for this event on on, on a number of levels. You yeah. know, the meta game, the games being unenjoyable to watch, um, and it was a shame because you know some some good people did well this weekend, and it, it it felt like that was overshadowed by the criticism. Absolutely, I mean these these top eights for Players Tour Online one and two are stacked mm-hmm. with with people, uh, you know, heroes all over the place. I mean mm-hmm. Elias. Watsfeld winning uh, online tour number one, uh, and then num- number two's top eight. It's just every name is a name that we've talked about on the show before. Just like mm-hmm. a murderer's row with Ryuji Mirai uh, taking the, the the top slot. Um, Ali Warfield top eight. Mm-hmm. Yep. And uh, yeah, Jean Emmanuel Dupre and a bunch of other people. So um, it's really unfortunate. I mean, obviously, Team of Reclamation and Band Control uh, ruled the day with a little bit of Jun sacrifice in one of the events. But it's it's Team of Reclamation's world, which mm-hmm. you can kind of have seen coming because oh, that yeah. was the only deck without a companion that was competitive during the companion metagame. Yeah, mm-hmm. and so you get rid of companions, you nerf every deck that is like they lost nothing in the 12 decks, yeah. cards, two bannings and 10 updates to the, that effectively banned companions. Um, it, it, this could have been predicted. Look, when mm-hmm. Wilderness Reclamation was first spoiled for the first time in a very long time, had I saw Patrick Chapin say, is this going to get banned? Yeah. You know, is this a ban worthy card? Because it kind of feels that way. This is just just like Fires of Invention. If you double your mana for free right. every turn, it's going to break something. And it's just ridiculous. It's, you know, we're sort of this, we're to this weird point where it's like, you have to just play green and standard. I'm sorry. Right now, yeah. until something changes, uh, Uro is better than everything else. Growth Spiral is better than any other ramp you're going to be trying. Like, it's just, yeah. it's just good. And it's, well, I mean, it's just good as in like, it's too good, you know? It's right. busted. Um, so that sucks. But, you know, in the fake, I really hate the fake PT narrative because, again, you know, when Allie Warfield makes this top eight, does an amazing job. Yeah. I'm not trying to take anything away from her, you know. But I think Wizards definitely feels like they're treating this as like, let's just get it done. Let's just push it out the door. Let's move on with our lives. Let's do this PT thing. So everybody can say right. they went to a PT, you know, two in, two in one weekend, two in another weekend, and then we're done with it, you know. It was very weird to me because, again, once again, coming back back to this Venn diagram of people who heard of Jumpstart didn't you know like people who'd heard of the Pro Tour Weekend people who'd heard of Jumpstart there was like no overlap between those mm-hmm. two things oh. which I thought was very very interesting well, I people, it felt like it wasn't like, promoted very well either no, there, there weren't many people who even knew the Pro Tour was happening so it did feel like Evan said it just sort of this just get it over with you know brush it under the rug hope nobody notices the cracks kind of thing huh. And, and that, you know, that sucks. I mean, no one wants to sort of have that be the narrative, no. you know? Uh, at least in my opinion, it don't. And, you know, what? I, it just felt like to me like some of the commentators just weren't really sort of involved. You know what I mean? Like, they were like, mm-hmm. hey, whatever. You know, they're just kind of lazy fair. social media, and, you had them making comments about people calling, you know, calling Noah Walker and Wyatt Darby, like, up-and-comers, where it's like, are you serious? <laughs> like, like Noah wow. Walker is a prime competitor, and so Wyatt Darby right. won a Pro Tour. Yeah, he won he? a Pro like, Tour. Right. Like, <laughs> yeah, Wyatt Darby's so even, a Pro Tour champion. Noah Walker... I mean, maybe qualified as a up and comer when we started this podcast five yeah. years ago. <laughs> I can't. I, I've lost count of the number of times he's he's top eighted any SCG opens and specifically legacy. Right. Like mm-hmm. putting Delver in his hands and it's just a beauty. Isn't to watch. he a GP like, champion? Also, I or so. GP, several GP top eights, there, but, yeah. but I mean, yeah. even the social media wasn't firing on all cylinders of not knowing who the competitors were. I don't, right. I, you know, I honestly, at this point, I'm not sure what Wizards is looking for in terms of standard. Like, is it just about you know, something's going to be the best? It's, it's the way it always is and always will right. be. Are you okay with the best being Wilderness Reclamation, 
Yes or no. I thought it was mm-hmm. like watching paint dry, trying to watch these matches, and mm-hmm. whoever had more lands won. That's the game. Literally, that's the mirror match. Or who could get rid of the reclamation? Yeah. Like, you know, seeing right. people bring in the wilts and, yeah. the, you know, the things like that. Yeah, and but just, it was, even when I saw that happen, though, every single time the person with more lands won the game. It's just, yeah. it's just okay, that's, that's your game, I guess? Like, fine. I mean, it feels a lot more like Legacy, where... Uh, you, you're, the, the one for ones, the two for ones, the card advantage, it just doesn't matter much right. anymore. Like, you can be hell bent and your opponent can have five cards and you can just win on the spot when you top deck a Nissa and then they don't have an answer to it. Or you top deck a Hydroid Crisis and they don't have an Like, every individual card's power level feels more like an older format now. That's not it's saying it's a bad thing. I'm just saying yeah. that's where we're at. Well, it's funny you say that because these cards are good enough for Legacy. You know, Uro's a thing, thanks yeah. to, you know, and, yeah, I mean, yeah. Th- this crazy, you know, five mana dragon and M21 supposed to be alongside Field of the Dead. Seriously? I mean, what what is happening? It's crazy. Well, look, we hope M21 is going to turn a corner because we're going to get a pre pre release. Oh, a yeah. special LRR only edition. I love it. Featuring paper magic played at a respectful and medically recommended, <laughs> recommended, yeah, physical recommended physical distance. distance. That's right. You yeah. love it. Paper magic in separate rooms. This yes. is such a brilliant. I mean, obviously, the post pre release was already. A, a master class in how to make lem- lemonade out of lemons. Yeah. This mm-hmm. is yet another example of Loading Ready Run just killing it, just being yeah. the best, mm-hmm. um, it's, and I love them so much. Yeah, they're great. So uh, obviously we hope for a, a fun event there. This is 11 a.m. Pacific on Monday, mm-hmm. June 22nd. So that is this coming Monday at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern. Check them out, twitch.tv yep. slash Loading Ready Run. And you can guarantee that Cameron won't have to eat bacon, which is nice. It's true. That that's it's, definitely it's, a thing. No one will pull it out of their pocket. Ah, uh, yes, I remember the bacon thing. Uh, let's see here. There was a really cool story that showed up uh, about one of the sponsors of this very show. Mm-hmm. Card right. Hoarder has had a very successful and honestly, at this point, long running uh, loan program where you're able to uh, you know pay a certain amount to loan a certain amount of cards to play on Magic Online as you see fit. And it's a super cool way to get into really old and or really expensive formats like modern and not lose your butt when you're trying to do so. Uh, but they said here, big loan program news. We now have a free five ticket loan option for anyone playing Magic Online. If you've wanted to try our program or try Magic Online, it's a lovely day to join. So you'd be surprised if that sounds low, five tickets, aka you know, sort of five dollars worth of stuff, you can build a lot of decks. You can build a lot of EDH decks, there's entire formats built around just playing what uh, penny cards or whatever on Magic mm-hmm. Online. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. So you can do a whole lot for absolutely free thanks to card hoarder. Yeah. So I thought that was really sweet. Yeah. yeah, and they've always had good customer service. You know, we were really lucky that we get to work with people that we genuinely enjoy and, and that we, we do business with ourselves. And so, you know, this is a good thing. Obviously, money's tight right now for a lot of people. I know that Card Hoarder uh, made news a while back for being uh, a bit more forgiving when it came to loan accounts, where it was like if you couldn't necessarily pay for yours. Um, and I think if it was due to, like, something COVID-related, like, there was some sort of forgiveness there. Um, and so they've always been really good on, on making the game accessible and affordable and um, it's just great to be able to rock with them. Yeah, it's fantastic. Um, lastly, here for the Count of the Towns folk, uh, a new show popped up from Sheldon yeah. Minery called The Command Chair, which was pretty cool. Mm. And Toby I, Elliott. I, yeah, I would just listen to, oh, man, I would just listen to him talk about Commander forever. Um, I'm super excited that this is a product, and on Star City Games, no less, where they have the ability to put some you know, put some thrust behind it yeah. and, and make something really good looking and well mm-hmm. produced. And this is uh, this is exactly the kind of content that I'm, I'm here for. There you go. Uh, so good luck to him on that. Move on here to Desperate Ravings. Boy, I know what y'all are here for. <laughs> Hi, how you doing? I'm not covering the subject, but I'll let them cover it. And yeah. let me know when to cool. move on. Cool, 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 um, so, uh, hi, hi, everybody. Hey. So, Evan stepped in it, uh, a little bit, what was it, Sunday? I'll eat this cookie um, What? I'm eating a cookie, what? go ahead. Oh, you're eating a cookie. <laughs> oh, good. 
I'm glad that, that glad that happened. Yeah. Uh, I think it was it was Sunday, maybe it was Saturday, where Evan tweeted. No, it was Monday. Was it I Monday? Believe. Yeah. Um, something that I don't have the tweet because uh, it's in the. So Evan Evan posted a tone deaf tweet oh, uh, talking about the thing he liked the most about Kamigawa, and as it happens, he also inadvertently boiled Kamigawa down to ultimately a stereotype or a cliche. Um, And so there were people of that heritage, people not of that heritage, um, who took offense to that, and and rightfully so. I admit I thought the tweets were very silly as well. Um, And it ended up turning into a bit of a dunk fest. You know, there was some valid criticism for a while there. um, And then, you know, some, I I think some vendettas kind of came out of nowhere. um, And it it just became very... Um, very difficult to watch. And so it lasted for about a day or so. And then uh, Evan hit up my friend uh, Kate Donnelly, who works for Hipsters of the Coast. Kate literally does PR for a living. And so he had um, contacted Kate and said, you know, I I need some help. I need to understand what's going on. Mm -hmm. And not only did he and Kate craft a really great apology, um, she also kind of helped him understand what he had said and and why it, um, you know, struck a chord with so many people or touched a nerve with so many people. Um, And so, you know, Evan's kind of on the mend after that right. and he's just trying to you know we're all trying to recover from this and I think he understands what he did um, and what he said and why it was hurtful um, and that was the that was the big story for the week like it it, it got really big it got very big I mean <laughs> got very big. triple digit retweets I think mm-hmm. eventually at the peak of it um, it's yeah. it's difficult being the main character on Twitter um, mm-hmm. for the day. Uh, that is something that you don't want to be. And uh, oftentimes, um, and, and I think that we can all speak here, we try to actively avoid any sort of, especially Evan, who has a reputation for being goody-two-shoes, excited about everything, um, and not trying to stir any pots. This is like... I'm not trying really to hurt silly. nobody, I promise. I, yeah. Right, but, w- try, but trying and doing are two different things. It's and true. Mm-hmm. I, and I'm, I have to admit, this is a blind spot for me, being a white person. Um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm Jewish, but that's like not... It doesn't translate to understanding why this was uh, the problem that it was. And we had a lot of great input from uh, folks like uh, uh, Ricky Hayashi and uh, Michelle. Michelle Rapp and Elantris. Yep. Uh, Who had uh, good input as to why this was problematic. And we can all learn from it going forward. All things considered, this could have been a lot worse uh, for Mr. Evan Irwin. Fortunately, he knows uh, when to stop talking. Uh, He also knows what to do afterwards, which is seek out professional advice, yes. um, <laughs> which is exactly what he did. Um, this and was let me a- just say, and, and you know, yeah, I mean, it was, it was, I, I was very glad how it was handled and like, yeah. it, it was, it was, yeah. look, this, this is the way I say, and I've said this before, I don't mess up a whole lot. I feel, but when you I had do, anything like this since the Oliver two thing, yeah, like, when, <laughs> when, when I do, it gets whoo, big. boy, sure. I, well, I step in How many in followers it. on Twitter do you have? Uh, 18,000, something 18, like yeah. that. You've got five digits worth of Twitter followers. Yeah. It's going to, I mean, this is a, an unavoidable, t- I mean, this specific instance, very avoidable. It is unavoidable as a famous person to not step in it if you use mm-hmm. Twitter.com as a program. And People I'll be are honest. are going to pick stuff apart. People are going to come after you. How if it these... wasn't going to be this, you were going to say something stupid later. Right. right? And, and how do these people who have six-digit, seven-digit accounts deal with something like this? I don't know. I, it, it was yeah. overwhelming for me at the time. And right. I, holy cow. Yeah. And, and, of course, you are one of the hosts of this show. So, of course, this show is going to be like, Evan had no has no maliciousness in his heart. This is, but think of you know if random other person had tweeted exactly this, and we were talking about right. this story this week. I mean, I understand. You know, it's so. it's an interesting angle. Yeah. So, uh, all right. So moving on. Uh, Good, but I'm 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 proud of you that you put it in the discussion and that we talked about it. So. I will own up yeah, to my own BS. We, I will own it up, right, all and, of it. And we weren't going to talk about this unless he was comfortable with it. Right. So we've asked him a couple times. I was prepared week, to like, take the week off if you needed. Yeah, like we were not expecting him to want to talk about it. We were like, do you even want to go there? And then he was like, we, we kind of have to. And so, you know, we I'm, he was a part of this yeah, discussion. Right. When you're the news, you're the news. 
Yeah. <laughs> like I, I'm not certainly not proud of it, but I'm also not going to hide it and act like right. it didn't happen because it did yeah. happen. And mm-hmm. I don't. And the, certainly the people you know who I respect who were who were upset like that that yeah. hurt the most. And I was of like, course. man, I was uh, okay. Anyway, we've this talked about a, it. Yeah. You guys are great. And this is by no means the only uh, thing that happened on Twitter.com this week, so we can keep moving on. <laughs> it's true. Uh, I do like pharmacists judge. The people with six and seven digit accounts, they have people who uh, check and approve before yeah. they tweet. <laughs> Yeah, smart. Yeah, Adele famously, I think, has her assistant like hold on to her phone yeah. or like doesn't let her tweet or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah I right. get that. That's amazing. Yeah. All right, so to some really, really good news, Caleb Durward, Caleb D MTG on Twitter, has a final tally of twenty four thousand two hundred and three dollars raised for the Southern nice. Center wow. for Human Rights. Way to go. We, we've had a number of magic personalities really step up to the plate. Jim Davis also raised a pretty impressive sum the other day, too. And, you know, like we've said before, you know, really using your platform for the right reasons. And, you know, it's it's very easy to feel like you don't know what to do or like you can't help. But if this is something you're good at and you have the following and or even if you don't have the following, like, you know, I've seen smaller streamers make a really big difference as well. Like if this is what you do, you know, you have the ability to turn that into action. And so these guys are doing what they do best. They're streaming, you know, they're, they're, they're generating, you know, money off of that. They're giving this to people who need it. And I think this is fantastic. There's been a lot of, and I think, uh, uh P. Sully did this, uh, Patrick Sullivan, who, uh, said something like, you know, respond to this tweet with, you know, mm-hmm. uh, a receipt that you have given like 20 or, or something more dollars and he'll put right. you in a pool to get a basic mountain from mm-hmm. Arabian Nights. And this is literally putting your money where your mouth is. You know, so many of the people who have stepped forward to talk about, you know, the issues surrounding race, a lot of it just boils down to pay us like pay us give money to these causes right. like we don't need your black squares we need your money right. like give money to these organizations to these bail funds that's what you can do because there's a lot of like what can i do pay us like mm-hmm. just just give money i i've donated several times like yeah. sometimes it's just all you need to do is just provide capital uh so addressing some uh, I guess we're going to turn over here to, well, we've been in the Desperate Ravens, haven't we? So yeah. uh, moving on here. To, yeah, we certainly have. I know um, you had an out, out-of-body experience. Yeah, I know, right. Sorry about that. Uh, Jesper Mirfers, who was the original art director for Wizards of the Coast, well, yeah. with the fallout of all of the cards that have racial overtones being banned and uh, their artwork being removed from Gather and stuff like that, and they finally fixed the 1488 thing. Thanks, Wizards. Appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Um, he notes here on Wizards has come to his attention that uh, Wizards is banning some cards on the grounds uh, of being racially insensitive, and he would like to address it. He needs to establish that when it came to any particular uh, illustration, he was the art director on the set in question. The final call was 100% his, and no one else was responsible. Essentially, and I'm going to move past down here, uh, you know, his goal was to try and make the game more inclusive and varied. If I failed on my part of that, and if I inadvertently offended anyone, I want to offer my full and sincere apology. Uh, there were some more artists and or the uh, the children of artists um, right. that had mentioned. This really was like a who's who of like magic history. True. Like I recognize quite a few names here. And, you know, people that were in a lot of it is people that were involved at the time the set was made because, you know, Alpha and Beta was a long time ago. Yeah. You know, you had the fire elements with like the giant boobs mm-hmm. and like earth bind and everything. And so clearly it was a different time. And, you know, it was and, and it was really neat to see the um, even if I didn't necessarily agree with a lot of their opinions, it was really neat to see what they were thinking at the time and what went into this process. And even uh, Sierra, Sierra, Sierra Rush, Rush, which is Christopher yep. Rush's daughter, um, who Christopher Rush is no longer with us. Even she was talking about what it means because her father's card, one of her one of Chris Rush's cards was impacted by this. Mm-hmm. And she was talking about, you know, I, you know, I, I, my dad would want this even if you wouldn't necessarily understand it kind of thing. Um, and so just an issue that has um, ended up having more layers than I think we intended when it first happened. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you're seeing a lot more people talk about the the fact that this is kind of a hollow gesture, that, you know, this is certainly a thing and it's mm-hmm. certainly a step, but we, we talked about putting your money where your mouth is. There needs to be more. Right. And we'll probably talk about some of the other steps that Wizards has taken, but the fact that this... People are, you know, people are saying it's kind of performative. You know, you're seeing people from other cultures chime in. And so um, I didn't expect it to be, um, you know, as controversial as it has been. Well, a uh, friend of the show, um, and, uh, and and please, please forgive me, Mr. Eric Froelich, um, uh, says here on Facebook, said, I've been around Magic Forever and always heard rumblings that the art for Invoke Prejudice was commissioned to specifically be racist imagery. Can you mm. confirm that that was entirely false or might there have been other people involved? And Jesper said, it was the artist's 
vision, the artist's vision, but I liked it because it was explicitly linking people who looked like KKK to invoking prejudice from his end. It was a slam on the KKK. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. So that's an interesting perspective. I've literally never read that before, having known all about Invoke Prejudice all this time. Well, it's funny because he, he, it sounds like he's trying to say that the art was meant to mock the KKK. Sounds about right, I think. But I'm not seeing the mocking happening. Mm. Where, like, <laughs> yeah. I think that this is not the end of this discussion. I mm-hmm. would, I mean, it's possible that some of the seven cards that were put on the naughty list um, that are scrubbed from Gatherer and don't show up in image searches anymore upon further reflection may get removed if if perhaps they are uh, uh, that message is not clear as a number of people have said I don't have a you know I don't think that this card falls into this category much in the way that either invoke prejudice or I mean Pradish gypsies obviously is going to stay there forever right um, but you know uh, the card cleanse I think people had it had a discussion about and I'm not advocating one way or the other I'm just saying that that is the one that I saw people talking about well um, where uh, I think that other cards will get added uh, eventually you know over time once more discussions are had but this was a good immediate response and we're still in the process of the conversation and uh, and I'll definitely agree with the pharmacist judge uh, there's a lot of uh, this card is an offensive quote unquote said by people who are not in that minority correct um, Rich Shea posted an interesting Google Doc uh, some Love him. yeah he's great uh, some words of wisdom for wizards to say hey there's a better approach to addressing magic's history um, they say problems with the prior approach is that Wizards made a decision without any consultation with members of the communities that they were purporting to help via racism. How many times have we been down this road where Wizards does something and you go, if you'd have just talked to anyone related (laughs) to this ever, we could have... Anyway. All right. Uh, Wizards missed the mark in some classifications and did not consider the impact of their actions on erasing representations. Jihad, for example, was labeled as racist, which kind of itself has some racist implications. Uh, And Wizards made a grand show of it, turning the tone of their announcement into a marketing presentation. Uh, That's Mm -hmm. arguable. You know, you can't really have it both ways, right? You can't want to see big systemic change or big changes happening to whatever you're caring about and also not want to point it out to everyone that, hey, we're making these changes, you know? So that, that, that to me is a little, a little, a little rough. Um, uh, he says, a better approach would be to reach out to the people, uh, as we talked about, don't make a grand show, okay, arguable, uh, don't actually ban the cards. I thought this was interesting because banning them may have the opposite effect because now, to the end of time, on every ban list, there are those cards going to be and people are going to go, oh, that's weird, what does that card do, right? Mm-hmm. They, they're not going to do yeah. that if it's never Stry there. Effect. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The other problem with banning cards to every ban list, well, they, I just mentioned, sorry about that. Um, and the first, none of the cards saw play in any competitive formats in the first place. You know what I mean? You're not removing it from a public viewing that it saw in yeah. tournaments all the time. Like they sure. just, they were just bad in tournaments. So it's, it's, it's an unplayable card to start with. So instead of banning, they, he said, uh, use this opportunity for education and improvement. Wizards has worked to improve, help your players do better as well. Replacing the card image with a generic block of text is quick and easy. It would uh, be more work to gather feedback and so on and so forth. Um, and finally, when you do decide that a card is racist, after consulting, uh, don't make an announcement. This is not advertising. It's time to be respectful. Uh, and But again, I think that it's also important to note when these changes are happening because the company is taking steps to do something about them. Uh, overall, though, Rich had a, a fantastic uh, little write-up. The uh, mm-hmm. link is in the show notes. We want to check it out. And uh, which kind of kind of dovetails into uh, Katie Bates's article. Oh, this was so good. Kate was the one who helped you with your yes. you know, apology the other day. Yes. Uh, she wrote an article uh, in collaboration with Lawrence Harmon um, and Elizabeth Rice, who've been very vocal about everything since Zane brought it up. Um, and this is 10 uh, steps that Wizards of the Coast should take to address racism. And these are good because ultimately this is a lot like, and I hope to God this analogy lands, <laughs> ultimately it's a lot like going on a diet where it's like you can't just eat salads for two weeks and declare your diet over with like you need to make a lifestyle change and so um, she mentions for example that you need to hire an outside firm to assess the company's internal hiring practices and how they can be improved to ensure the company's creating a diverse environment Um, commit to more equitable hiring practices create a safe space for BIPOC staff to gather um, you know create an internal team put people on the storytelling and art teams make sure that the marketing R&D and set design teams have you know 
BIPOC folks on them. I'm always afraid I'm going to screw that acronym up, so I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> um, donating to nonprofits, reaching out to community members. And so these are really good, concrete things that, again, if you're not sure what to do, you know, you could really start here. And so I think this was a great piece. Yeah, it was really sweet. And this is also something that I can understand, you know, sounds like a lot in many ways, but also like I need to do a lot right now. And yeah, maybe it gets you know, pared down later and you don't need this kind of counsel or whatever that they were talking about. But right now, it's kind of important that we do yeah. really concrete steps to help it, move on. It forward. has to be a lifestyle change because it is in the institution. And so you, you have to rebuild the foundation, essentially, to make sure that everything mm-hmm. above it supports this. And, mm-hmm. you know, these are some ways that you can implement that. And, and, you know, we are starting to see some of that. You know, there were some links the other day that Wizards was sending out for job openings um, saying, you know, we are looking to hire, you know, BIPOC writers and uh, we have an opening for a narrative design manager. And so it sounds like they are trying to reach out and actively target people. Um, people in those communities. I just hope that it works and that they're doing more behind the scenes too. Yeah. Uh, there was a, a terrific article uh, by Mark Rosewater himself uh, on the blog talk. Just some thoughts about, you know, being part of change and a desire to be part of this change. And, you know, I heard, heard passion about it in meetings, online communications and stuff. Um, you know, have a time for self-reflection, you know, and uh, and he, he thinks he can be better at communicating with all of them. But I'll be honest, Mark, you, you're an incredible communicator. I don't know what to tell you. You've been doing a great job for so long um it'd be hard i think to improve that aspect of it but regardless you know it was really sweet mm-hmm. and nice again uh, links in the show notes you can check it out um and as we mentioned they're going to hire uh, bipoc writers which is cool um mdg tabletop looking for a narrative design manager which is kind of neat um commissioning external writers and working alongside them to help shape their worlds and stories i'll put that link here in the uh in the chat if you want to check that out um, there was a, uh, we're kind of reaching into the mainstream or at least the, the pseudo mainstream when we have Joe Rogan talking oh about magic, the gathering out of nowhere. When did that happen? Oh yeah, it happened. It was like a 10 minute segment. Um, what? you know, we play a dumb nerd game that no one cares about, uh, and had weird racist things in it. Um, so that, that oh, happened. Weird. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> we we, were, we were we were dismissed. Don't worry. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, okay, good. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Joe Rogan has $100 million from Spotify. He doesn't need to come to <laughs> But speaking of videos that aren't painful to watch, a young lady named Melina Pendulum uh, also made a video talking about the racist card kerfuffle, and it was very well received. It was very eloquent. You should absolutely go look at that video if you don't want to look at Joe Rogan and 10 minutes of look how much I don't care about this thing that I'm talking. I'll link, I'll link the Molina Pendulum video in the chat. That's good. And okay. You can get the, the other ones in the show Amplify notes. a woman of color. Absolutely. Like there we go. Uh, so, interestingly enough, uh, Austin Burse, Bursevich, right? Austin, Austin Bursevich. Bursevich. Bursevich got unbanned. Aaron's, Aaron's favorite. Aaron's favorite <laughs> magic personality, Woo! Austin Bursevich. Yeah, I got an email on June 16th. That was yesterday that uh, the investigation was over and he is unsuspended. Mm. He posted a Braveheart gif in celebration. He did. He's a bit overwhelmed. Don't know what to say. Uh, thanks to everybody who stood up for him, and he'll be seeing you all in the Arena Players Tour this weekend, which means he originally had that taken away. Now he can play yeah. at the PT. And we discussed this, and uh, and I agree um, that Wizards should have done something, but I, I think forever yeah. is just too long. It's just mm-hmm. it's over the top. Um, so congrats to him. And again, this is being you know things that you know many people spoke about, not just him. Uh, yada yada yada. So congrats to Austin on that mm-hmm. one. Uh, hey, it's really uncomfortable news time. <laughs> we just went through this like 10 minutes ago. <sighs> Look, you know, uh, just like um, Conley Woods had, had some issues that we didn't necessarily expand upon, Kevin Jones is having some issues this week. He was dropped from Team Nova, uh, and I'll just read their announcement. They said, with recent information coming to light regarding team member Kevin Jones, he has been removed from the team effective immediately. We do not condone or support the type of behavior he has been accused of, and there is no room for it in our community, and we're not going to expand on that. We just want you to know that happened. And if yeah. you want to go Google it or whatever, Sometimes go nuts. topics are too heavy even for us, or we just don't feel like we're able to give them the care that they deserve. And so something happened. It was newsworthy. And if you would like to know more, you can. It was very it. negative. That's that's why we're here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's not, not why we're here. That's why we're reporting it. Um, that said, uh, Mark Johnson was the... Jacobson. Jake, Mark Jacobson. Sorry, Lordy. 
It's so right there in got, front of my face. Got it's no right shot there. shot of pronouncing this word that Joe I've said. I've got it. I got this. See, you can't get Jacobson? Look, I just written over it. the Jacobson Can I hurdle? misread something? All right. Man. He oh won in March 29th. He won the first ever Magic Fest online weekend championship um, and had asked at the time at Channel Fireball if I chip in, can I get a trophy? Uh, well, that trophy has shown up. Nice. Oh, he looks nice. Yeah, did he really have to cool. buy it, or did they actually just send him a like a trophy? Uh, I do not know, to be honest. Um, but I do know he has a trophy. I hope it's good for him. Yeah, yeah. Good yeah. We're gonna, I'll bring it up here on the screen. You guys can take a look at it, which is it's really got nice. A picture. It's, it's got, got a picture. It's got a picture of great him. Great quarantine beard going. Yeah, it does. love it. That quarantine beard. So help dope. me un- help me understand this because I I don't know what it's like. Um, is there a shortage on razors? Like, what is it about quarantine that means I'm not shaving? Like, yeah, someone- interesting. So I first of all. Ruben Bressler looks way better with a beard than without. Um, wow, I, I look. I, it's not. It's not. It's not great. But okay. um, the so because we're leaving the house less, we have to be less. We don't have to be as presentable. It's like when you go when you have a a, a job, and you have to. So it would be like the female equivalent of putting on a bra. <coughs> yes. <coughs> okay. Beards are a man's bra. <laughs> what did you just say? Okay, all right, no, we're moving backwards. on. So beard is, is Lord a Almighty. What happened? Oh my God! Look, shaving is a man's bra. There it is. Double masters it. is still a thing. I know we haven't spoken about it, and Wizards kind of turned the eye of Sauron elsewhere for a while. Yeah, they did. But VIP packs for double masters have officially debuted at a hundred bucks, oh. essentially a piece. Sure. These are hundred dollar lottery tickets. We have no idea what's in them. I hope so. they're somehow crazily worth a hundred bucks because they're going to have to pump some value in these things. Think about it this way: if you buy a set of standard boosters, right, uh, and you buy that whole box uh, for like hundred bucks, whatever, I think, I think it comes out to about twelve cents a card, right? You're paying five dollars a card for every card in this VIP pack. Okay. That is a profit margin that is absurd. Yeah, that's like, ridiculous. that is unbelievable. So, uh, so be prepared to see many VIP packs uh, coming your way, is, is my expectation. Um, and you can get them right now. I believe right now, coolstuffing.com, $99.99. Free shipping. Hey, man. It's, I remember it's, it's buying products, a booster, man. I remember buying a booster box for like 80 Dude, they were 50 bucks back when I started, way back That's in the day. Nice. Alliance's box is 50 bucks all day. That's how much it was. And I remember that being a lot of money. Like, I remember being a kid at the mm-hmm. local game store and just thinking how cool it was to be an adult that could afford a box because I was just, right. I'd babysitting money. I couldn't do that. Mm-hmm. I'd like so play I'm, at FNM, maybe buy one pack or something. And I remember when I came back to the game, I came back for Innistrad and I was much older and I had a good job. And I remember just marching into like the nearest game store, buying a box of, you know, Innistrad and Dark Ascension, opening them on the couch and just like rolling around in the pack wrappings. <laughs> like, just <laughs> like, I was such a good feeling. That's such a Amazing yeah. feeling like, when you kind of have yeah. that power. Um, yeah. yeah, it's like, and again, it just—it didn't cost them one penny more to make those mm-hmm. cards than it did any other magic card that they're making. Jeez. Which yeah. is, yeah, I mean, they're going ridiculous. back to the money lever. This is again. where they are a subsidiary of Hasbro, who has shareholders who certainly like those earnings calls, where you know magic <laughs> is killing it. Like, yeah. well, we're saying killing it, but is this going to kill it? Mm. Like, we've seen a lot of, of doomsayers say that this is like a bridge too far. Yeah, no, I'm it's, not sure. Um, th- it's pretty gross, though. If if this product does super well, two hundred dollar packs might be in our future. Going to be the limit. Yeah, I'm serious. We have not, I think, found the top. We, we, they've not, you know, gotten to the top of the market yet. I think, like, they're right. keep, they keep trying. What's the most expensive? What's the most elaborate? How many? How, can we get them coming back for multiple bites of the apple? Right. The mythic editions were neat, but that's one bite, right? If I can get you right. to come back for a hundred dollars a time, a hundred dollars a time, oh, ooh, those margins add up real fast. I'll say this: you will. Ne- I I predict I will never see one of these. Is like, what I predict. Physically I will see never them. Physically see one. Oh, you'll be at Grand Prix um, eventually, you know, I'm sure. And see one of these? Maybe, yeah, the VIP pack no is fine. Way, no be, way, You still see Modern Masters packs from 10 years ago. Like, it's That's fine. That's true. Yeah, we do. Um, but either way, that that is a lot of money for a Magic card or a Magic card pack. Uh, so tell me about these Legacy Challenges not firing, Aaron. 
Yeah, so for uh, so the Legacy Challenges happen twice a week uh, on the weekends, one on Saturday, one on Sunday. Um, and the ones on Saturday had not fired in three weeks, for three weeks straight. Um, that's unprecedented. Yeah. Um, and so people were trying to figure out what the reason for that was, whether mm. it was Companions, whether it was Astrolabe, because Astrolabe is still not banned in Legacy. I have no idea how. Why? Um, but it sounds like the issue was that Legacy still had a 64-player minimum, mm. um, which which was making it very difficult to fire. Vintage had been reduced to 32 players, which, I mean, even the vintage ones were firing, and so we couldn't figure out what the problem was. Mm. Um, ultimately, it was that. Uh, in the Magic Online notes for the week, they did note that they are going to be reducing it to 32, just like vintage. Um, so hopefully that means they fire again. But it's a bad sign, particularly with a format like Legacy that uh, really is confined to Magic Online for the most part, especially during COVID. Um, if those challenges aren't firing, that's a really really big deal and we need to figure out why that is queen marchessa long may she reign just sent us twenty three thousand bits are you kidding what i am not kidding oh my goodness i haven't wow. seen him in ages thank you goodness gracious thank you so very much uh, i that's, clicked away oh. oh my gosh yeah i just joined Layla of magic mike's happy pride i love you dretch queen is wow. the note on that one. <laughs> Oh, thank you so much. I can't wait to see I'm you again. I'm pretty sure they're talking to me. Bye. <laughs> it's fine. Oh, my goodness. Uh, real fast here as we almost turn the corner through some splash damage. Uh, cool, cool Stuff Inc. is observing Juneteenth this week. Uh, mm -hmm. Decision came out today um, yep. that we have a paid company holiday uh, this Friday, which, first of all, thank you very much. And second of all, would hope to, you know, hey, Maybe some of the gaming industry could also yeah. take this, you know, as hey, you know, this is something that we could do, you know, a showing of support. It is a, a very real cost to, to do those yeah. things. Mm -hmm. For those who don't know, uh, Juneteenth is a, according to Wikipedia, it's an unofficial American holiday celebrated annually on the 19th of June to commemorate the Union Army uh, reading federal orders in the city of Galveston, Texas on June 19th, 1865, proclaiming that all enslaved persons in the U.S. state of Texas were now freeze. That's a very, very big deal. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen uh, many businesses um, making this now an official holiday, mm -hmm. um, and I'm really glad to see that cool stuff is falling in line with that. Yeah, man. Yeah. I, I love the company I work for. It's absolutely terrific. Um, and to do stuff like this just, you know, makes me proud. Um, which is great. Yep. Uh, but I look up that Juneteenth stuff. I, I had not, and I didn't know they had to like basically kind of invade and like the, the slave owners were keeping the slaves, you know, out of the loop. So they wouldn't read about it or know about it. Cause they couldn't mm -hmm. read at the time. So like mm -hmm. whole bunch of craziness yeah. that, that culminated well, with this that. Is, this is why this announcement, if it gets people to learn more, yeah. mm -hmm. that's exactly what they should be doing. And CSI yeah. literally putting their money where their mouth is in a new way, in addition to giving money directly to the cause, also right. showing that you can do it in a number of different ways. Education is a big part of it as well. Mm. And taking the time to educate yourself is a big one nowadays. You know, you, you can't expect people to do the labor for you, you know, because there's a lot of that nowadays of like, what does this mean? Yeah. What should I do? And it's like, Google's a thing. Yep. Like, you yeah, know, I don't, we live in the information age nowadays. It's true. Like, yeah. You know, stop asking your friends to do that heavy lifting for you. Yep. Uh, Riot Games fired Ron Johnson, which I believe is a Ooh. vice president yes. uh, of the company. Okay. Um, uh, what is, what, why is this news? He uh, well, he was fired as he um, instead decided to bring up uh, George Floyd's uh, past oh, instead yikes. of uh, addressing why there yeah. was a con why there was an issue. Uh, so okay. yeah, yeah, and, and GTFO, get this guy out of here. Yeah, and, 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 <laughs> so, and so Riot Ryan Games Johnson, has so had a long Facebook. string of problems with their culture. So he posted a meme to Facebook and says it is a learning opportunity for people and your kids to teach that this type of criminal lifestyle never results in good things happening to you or those around you. Wow. Like, it's, get it's, into the scene, Right, it's, it's low-key he deserved it. Like, whoa. And Riot has had some problem. Was, wasn't Riot the one uh, that had the big scandal with, like, sexism yep. in the last yep. year? Yep, and so, the, the bro wow. culture They're and all this other stuff. all the bases. Oh, marking yeah. all the bingo card things off. Just get rid of them. Oh, goodness gracious. Let me tell you. But, uh, Ruben, tell us about D&D &D and diversity. Yeah, so this Ooh. actually came out today. Um, if you're th if you're wondering more about Wizards of the Coast, they make two of the world's largest fantasy games, Magic Gathering and Dungeons and & Dragons. And today 
they uh, had an article called Diversity and Dungeons and Dragons, where they've taken a look at a lot of their creative products and the inherent and built-in biases within those products. Um, One of the explicit design goals of 5th edition D&D is to depict humanity in all its beautiful diversity by depicting characters who represent an array of ethnicities, gender identities, sexual orientations, and beliefs. We want everyone to feel at home around the game table and to see positive reflections of themselves within within our products. Human in D&D means everyone, not just fantasy versions of Northern Europeans. And the D&D community is now more diverse than it's ever been. And they did a number of new things and, and, and talked about some of the things that they're doing. For example, um, they're presenting orcs and drow, which are two uh, of the older, um, more fraught fantasy races, in uh, a new light in two of the more recent books, Eberron Rising from the Last War and The Explorer's Guide to Wildmount, and hmm. also updating how orcs and drow are approached mo- morally and culturally in future products. Hmm. Uh, they're changing uh, stuff that has happened in books from... Five years ago, uh, Tomb of Annihilation came out three years ago. Curse of Strahd came out more than five years ago. Hmm. Uh, and they're changing text that was racially insensitive, specifically pertaining in Curse of Strahd to the Vistani, which uh, th- this was the big one to me. Was Curse of Strahd included a, included a people known as the Vistani and featured the Vistani heroine Esmeralda. Regrettably, their decision... Their depiction echoes some stereotypes associated with the Romani people in the real world. To rectify that, we've not only made changes to Curse of Strahd, but in two upcoming books, we will also show, working with a Romani consultant, the Vistani in a way that doesn't rely on reductive tropes. Um, These are just a couple of the examples from this announcement. Um, Having been a part of these discussions on Twitter and in discords and knowing that they were looking to make actionable change within their creative products because Dungeons and Dragons and all role playing games are an excellent way and maybe the best way we have right now to experience empathy to literally put on someone else's shoes and be someone else. And so in order to use it as a tool for change, in addition as to being an entertaining uh, uh, pastime, this is just, this is a great, this is a great move. Nice. Well, this is, this is again, the money where their mouth is type of action, and that's great. Yeah. So. And having played Curse of Strahd, uh, it was very uncomfortable. <laughs> um, and the change is warranted, and I'm glad that they're taking steps to do so. Nice. We get to turn the corner officially to the finisher. Pokemon Snap is back. Debuting all the way back in 1999 for the Nintendo 64, the point-and-click first-person rail shooter style title is finally getting a sequel two decades after initial release for the Nintendo Switch. In this age of low stakes, relaxing, calming gameplay, being all the rage like Animal Crossing New Horizons, and the proven popularity of casual formats like Commander, I think it's time to get away for the high pressure from the high pressure, competitive, anxiety-inducing magic. So how can magic capitalize on this new chill game? Game fad, Aaron? Well, I'm an MMO girl. World of Warcraft was my jam, and we were supposed to get the MMO version of Magic sometime soon, but I don't know if that's still going to happen. So I'm thinking instead of reinventing the wheel, just merge the world of Magic into the world of Warcraft. The next patch, coming this fall, Mists of Dominaria. Nice. I would would play that. You'd be on that. Teferi as a boss? Like, yes. Sounds great. He's, he's currently the boss now, so like, I mean, it's true. He's, why not make him an end boss? Come on, all right, Ruben. I used to play a lot of Roller Coaster and Lemonade Tycoon back in the day. Really excellent stuff. I love that little resource management kind of exercise. And there's an aspect of the game of magic that hasn't yet been gamified. Oh my god. And one that Watsy hasn't really monetized. So I'm excited for this summer's release, MTG Finance Tycoon. Goodness gracious. There needs to be a digital version of trading and buying and selling and going to shows to pick up cards to do the thing. Oh my god. Look, digital objects of digital objects. I know, right? <laughs> I think another fad we can revive is Tamagotchi's pocket monsters match up super well with the world of magic so i'm excited to open my gifts under the tree this christmas and get myself a brand new isamara gachi yeah that'd be sweet a little tutu in your pocket there you go and that ends the live episode of magic mics thanks for joining us here to discuss all things magic thank you aaron thank you for having me thank you reuben 
Thank you. As we move here to our final slide. I want to thank our sponsor, CoolStuffInc.com, our co-sponsor, CardHoarder.com, my co-hosts, Aaron Campbell and Ruben Bressler. You guys for watching and listening. I hope you support us at Patreon.com slash Magic Mics. Please follow, like, tweet, favor, share, subscribe to everything social that tells people we exist. Catch us online on our Discord, Twitch.tv at Magic Mics, on Twitter at Magic Mics Cast, our Magic Mics subreddit, and like the Magic Mics page on Facebook. Talk to us privately at Magic Mics Podcast at gmail.com. Follow the audio-only podcast at Magic Mics Podcast at Libsyn.com, or find us on iTunes and Spotify, or join us here next week. Same time, same place for another episode of Magic Mics. Good night, everybody.